Hey there everybody, Decaf here from YSFlightHeadquarters.com and YSUpload.com and today we're taking a look at making some high quality text decals. Now, when we're making text decals, it can be a lot of time because fonts in particular are kind of hard to replicate when we're just tracing it out. There's a lot of complicated shapes and there's a lot of geometry that we got to capture. But we can simplify things if we use a font, and in particular, using fonts for very fancy looking decals is probably the way to go. If you have a nice simple font like United or Southwest, maybe you could get away with just a trace. It might be faster. But for something like this with the Austrian logo, this is a bit more complicated. So the first thing we gotta do is take a look at some of the key features here and try to identify what text this reminds us of. And there's a couple things that I'm paying attention to right now, and that is the A right here. We have a very thin side and a very thick side. It's also got a uh, sort of a, a serif top. Um, we also have the R and the A here. It's got a, a nice bulb kind of nose loop there. And also both the T's and the R sort of have this slant down thing up top. And just straight off the bat, this reminds me a lot of Times New Roman or Times. So if you have that font installed on your computer, you could go ahead and find it and drag it to wherever you're working. But uh, let's say that it's not Times New Roman. Let's say it's some obscure font that we find online. Well, if we go to Google and we search free font, that's important, we want to download free stuff, similar to Times, we come up with a, a few uh, results. And in particular, Font Space right here has a pretty good lookalike called Cardiff. And this is completely free. Uh, Commercial use is allowed, it's licensed as public domain, which means we can use it for anything that we want, which is excellent. So we're, we go ahead and download that. And then we can go in and take a look at where I'm putting this. So this is my aircraft model folder, and in particular, here's my 737 repaints. And right here, I have a fonts folder. And I have, as you can see right here, the Cardiff. And I have the TTF right there. That is really, really great because I'm actually working in this folder right here, the Austrian Airlines logo. All right, that right there makes things a lot simpler because now I don't have to dig, go digging through my computer. It's right where I am and it's nice. So let's go ahead and load that up and make a text decal. Let's go ahead and say add text. We're gonna hit load. We're gonna back out one or two, go to fonts, Cardiff, and we'll go with the first Cardiff there, and now let's type this in Austrian, there we go, and we'll sort of get that into position, and we'll scale it up to be about the right size, and there's a couple things we can do if it's not quite the right size in terms of length, we can go ahead and add some width to those, it makes it a little bolder, but we can also uh, space it out just a little bit. So we can type in a number 1.05 there. It's pretty close. Let's go 1.06, 0.07. Yeah, there we go. Now I emphasized this right here, getting the width right, because when we're making our decal, we want things sort of spaced out the same as the original um, piece that we're trying to replicate. Um, if we go in and just sort of, meh, sort of, don't space it, you know, whatever, it looks okay. It's It'll look a little bit more cramped than what we're actually trying to do. And when we try to match it up to uh, like the windows or something like that on our aircraft, it looks a little bit funny and it's not quite right. And that can throw us off a bit. So if we put just this tiny little bit of effort in right now, it's gonna help us a lot later on down the road. So now there's one more step that we're gonna take. Now, as I showed, last week or a couple weeks ago rather we can simplify curves and reduce the number of vertices that each curve has so why don't we do that here notice right here we have the same sort of toolbar area where we have the default resolution for curves and if I bump this way down you can see oh no that kinda looks kinda funny but if I bring this up to like three or four that's more than enough to capture all the little loops there all the curves in the S, I think four is probably gonna be the best because that little bit right there looks a little bit funky if I have three. So I'll keep that as a four. 
but I mean everything is pretty darn close to the font behind it. You can see it's matching up pretty darn well. Not quite 100% naturally, but it's not too bad. So now if we go object convert object type mesh, there's a lot fewer vertices than we would have had to deal with elsewise. So now we have to clean this up. All right, that can be a bit of a challenge. And if I'm looking to keep all of my uh, vertices here, maybe I'd trim a couple out here and there uh, just to make my life a little bit easier. I can go ahead and do that. And I'd actually recommend you do this first. Then what we have to do is go in and de-triangulate uh, all of this mesh. And that can be quite a bit of a challenge, let me tell you. Um, really, when we're doing this, I recommend you go ahead and just gut everything. Um, so if I'm working on this A here, I'm going to get rid of everything except the outer edges. And I'm working exclusively in edge mode here because it's easy to select an edge. A face, we could actually accidentally delete the uh, sidewalls, and that we don't want. We want to keep the sidewalls. And before I go ahead and get really in depth here, I want to just make sure that all my vertices are not going to be insane because uh, I don't want to have an excess number of vertices and it would actually um, be a little bit harmful for me if I have a huge number of excess vertices that I'm never going to touch again. And there we go. And let's just sort of move that guy, sort of fiddle with it. So that might be kind of the detail that I want. All right, not too much. And now I'm going to go back into my edge mode. And I'm going to go ahead and try to put in as few triangles as I possibly can. Every single place where I can make a quadrilateral trapezoid or something like that, I'm going to do it. Because it makes my life a lot easier down the road. Now, obviously, we can't get rid of every single instance where this might occur, but we can get rid of a vast majority of them. And perhaps this guy right here is not the best example to use simply because, well, I'm putting in a lot of um, excess triangles just because it's the nature of the shape. I can't get around that. But if I'm looking at something like the S over here, and I go ahead and say I've already got all of the vertices in the position that I want, just to save a little time here. And I go ahead and delete everything on the inside. And I delete all the way down. Uh, so we can start at one end of the S. Boy, this is going to take a little while to get all of them. There we go, almost there. All right. Now what we can do is, if I'm going through, I'm going to try to keep every single face as parallel as I can. And it may get a little bit warped, but I'm going to try to make sure throughout all my efforts that things don't get crossed and I accidentally put in a triangle here and then keep going because it's you know getting kind of sheared look no I want to keep this as much like this as I possibly can now obviously is it it's not going to work in every single situation eventually I'm going to have to get rid of uh, some of these faces and turn them into triangles at some point but sometimes we can make it so that we can go all the way around and at the very very end we have to deal with triangles so let me just show you my final result here and you can see what I mean I was able to get all of this wrapping around and I didn't hit a single triangle until up here that is going to help you out a lot because we don't have a lot of triangles it's going to simplify how wise flight renders it it's going to make it a lot easier now I didn't do anything up here simply because I was being a little bit lazy but there's also places like here where we have to accept some triangles. All right, there's just no way to make that shape using just quadrilaterals. So really it's just a judgment call and some practice on your part to get up to uh, making something like this. It'll take some practice and uh, some time to get it right. But once you get into the hang of this and you really understand what's going on, this will be 
a really good way to make text decals. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about what we went over today, go ahead and throw me a comment down below or send me a private message on wiseflightheadquarters.com. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you may have. Until next time, have fun. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to find some cool add-ons for YS Flight, head on over to YSUpload.com, the official add-on hosting site for YSHeadquarters.com.